السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار uh, My dear brothers and sisters, welcome you back to our Friday night halaqa Today is the night of the 28th of Rajab, 1442 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which coincides with March 12, 2021 And today we are going to talk about Zakat al-Mal or the obligatory charity that is due upon our uh, wealth. Uh, not all the wealth, the special wealth, special types of wealth. And the reason before the Ramadan we discuss this is because Ramadan is one of those months usually people calculate their zakat. Although there is nothing special uh, of calculating zakat in Ramadan, there is no extra reward in, in giving zakat in Ramadan because there is no text to uh, clarify that. However, our Prophet Sallallahu used to be more generous in the month of Ramadan. And this has nothing to do with the month of Ramadan. Uh, sorry, this has nothing to do with the zakat ilmal. This is to do with his general uh, generous nature with which he used to serve the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There is one author report authentic uh, 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 on the authority of Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu that he gave once a khutbah and he said, this is the month of your zakat. This is the month of your zakat. So he mentioned anybody who owes any loan, then let him deduct the loan and then pay the zakat. I.e. let him pay the loan and then whatever is remain upon from the, the in the wealth from minus the loan, they give zakat on that. This athar or report has been uh, uh, understood by some of the people that it was the month of Ramadan. Whereas there is no authentic text to mention that it has to do anything with Ramadan. But he was talking about most likely in his time, a month that was famously known for people to calculate their zakat. And if you look at the, the, the wisdom of zakat, and if you look at the, the, the rules of the zakat, we know that zakat will not be due upon our wealth unless the wealth reaches nisab. So it's possible that for a person the nisab, the minimum amount reaches in shawwal or in Muharram, or in Dhul Qada, or in Dhul Hijjah. So if that Nisab reaches on that month, then the year of the Zakat starts from that month, from that specific day where the Nisab has been reached. And that shows that a Muslim is supposed to count his wealth and, and make sure that you know what is happening to his wealth and so on and so forth. Zakat is one of those charity which is a very special charity with regards to how it should be taken what amount should be taken and who should it be given to and when it should be given to. So these are all rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala imposed upon this specific charity. Whereas the general charity, the sadaqa, there is no specific rule. It is open-ended. Of course, there are rules that it cannot be from haram wealth. For example, it should not be a person should not give charity like all of his wealth in the fee sabili land, leave his family begging. No, it should not be like that. Of course, there are rules, but in general, the matter of sadaqa is more flexible. For example, zakat cannot be given, zakat ilmal cannot be given to the non-Muslims. Okay, except if there are there is a group that we're going to talk about, inshallah. Uh, who known as Mu'allafati Qulubuhum. Other than that, in general, non-Muslims are not allowed to get this zakat. But we are supposed, we are allowed to give sadaqa, general charity, to any non-Muslims. If that will benefit them, help them, support them, uh, yes, that is allowed, insha'Allah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, verse number 103, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّهِمْ بِهَا وَصَلِّ عَلَيْهِمْ إِنَّ صَلَاتَكَ سَكَنُ اللَّهُمْ وَاللَّهُ سَمِيعٌ عَلِيمٌ Allah Ta'ala says more or less the meaning take charity commanding the Prophet Sallallahu take the sadaqah from their wealth in order to purify them and to sanctify them with it and invoke Allah for them meaning invoke 
Allah's blessings upon them because your invocation, the Prophet's invocation, are a source of security for them, i.e. the believers, and Allah is all hearing and all knower. Uh, we have the hadith of Jibril alayhi salam when uh, the, the Jibril alayhi salam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi the hadith in Sahih Muslim what is Islam and the Prophet explained Islam is to say the shahada and to pray the five times a day and to give the zakat and also we have the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu which is uh, reported by, uh, by Imam al-Bukhari and Imam Muslim uh, Buni al-Islam ala khams Islam is built upon five and he mentions one of the pillar is to give the zakat. There is no difference of opinion among the ulama of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah that zakat is obligatory with certain conditions, inshallah, as we will see. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also describes that the, the characteristics of the kuffar is that they don't give zakat. Allah ta'ala says in Surah Al Fusilat, lil kafirun, and woe be to the kuffar, alladina la yutuna zakata wa hum bil akhirati hum kafirun. They do not give the zakat, they do not give the obligatory charity, and they are in the hereafter a disbeliever. They disbelieve in the hereafter. In Surah Tawbah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 34, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, inna kathiran min al-ahbari wa ruhbani la ya'kuluna amwala al-nasi bil-batil, wa yasudduna an sabilillah, wa al-ladhina yaknizuna al-dhahaba wal-fiddata, wa la yanfiqunaha fi sabilillahi, fabashirhum bi'adhabin alim. O oh, you who believe, more or less the meaning, O oh, you who believe, verily there are many of the rabbis and the monks who uh, collect the wealth of the mankind with falsehood and they hinder the mankind from the way of Allah. And those who hoard up gold and silver, and they do not spend it in the path of Allah, then announce to them a painful torment. Rawahu Imam al-Bukhari. The chapter, Bab ma uddiya zakatuhu falai sabikans. Whatever has been given zakat from the wealth, then this is not referred to as al kans. Because Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says, Fawailulli walladina yaknizuna dhahab. Yaknizuna dhahab. Yaknizun from kans, meaning they don't treasure or hoard. So Imam al Bukhari, he brought this athar, this report, and he said the chapter. Whatever wealth upon which the zakat is given, then this is not kans, meaning Allah will not hold us accountable for holding that wealth. This is reported uh, by Khalid ibn Aslam. Qala kharajna ma'a Abdullah ibn Umar radiyallahu anhumah. Faqala a'rabiyyu akhbirni qawlillahi walladhina yatnizuna al-dhahaba bal-fiddata wa la yunfikunaha fi sabilillah. One day he said, we went out with Abdullah ibn Umar and the Arabi came and asked Abdullah ibn Umar, tell me about the verse of Allah, those who hoard or those who uh, uh, treasure the gold and silver and they do not spend in the path of Allah. What does this mean? Qala ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, Man kanzaha falam yu'addi zakataha, the one who collects it, hoards it and he does not pay, fawailullahu, then woe be to him. إِنَّمَا كَانَ هَذَا قَبْلَ أَن تُنْزَلَ الزَّكَاتُ This was before the zakat was revealed. فَلَمَّا أُنْزِلَتْ جَعَلَهَ اللَّهُ تُهْرًا لِلْأَمْوَالِ But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the zakat, then the zakat became a tuhra, a purification for the wealth. Now we know that this ayat is in Surah Tawbah. And Surah Tawbah is Madani. So Abdullah ibn Umar saying that this verse was revealed before the zakat was revealed, before the rulings of the zakat was revealed. Does it mean that the zakat was not revealed, the obligation of zakat was not revealed until the, uh, the, the, after the Prophet moved to Al-Madinah? The answer is no. Zakat was revealed, meaning the obligation of zakat was revealed in Makkah. We have several ayat, Surah Al-Fusilat, Surah Al-Muzammil, Surah Al-Luqman, and all of these are Makki, Makki surahs which talks about giving zakat. Surah Al-Luqman, Surah Al-Muzammir, Surah Al-Fusila, Surah Al-A'la talks about giving the zakat and this is all Makki surahs. So the point over here Abdullah ibn Umar is mentioning is not the zakat, obligation of the zakat but is talking about the, the details of the ruling that this much should be given, that much should be given, this other people who should be given to these rules were not revealed until after the Prophet 
moved to Al Madinah, and this is what Imam Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions in Fathul Bari, explaining that Murad bi Nuzuli Zakati bayan nasabiha wa wa maqadir, maqadiraha, la inzal aslaha. So he's saying that it's not talking about the 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 obligation of a zakat is talking about the obligation of the nisab, obligation of the haul, and of the obligation of the maqadir, meaning like what is the quantity of zakat that should be given. These are the things that Abdul Ibn Umar is mentioning in this verse, uh, 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 explaining this verse. Uh, we have covered a lot of you know these general things in our previous year's zakat workshop. You know, it is in our uh, uh, YouTube channel, Knowledge for Friends. I'm going to forward that, inshallah. So I'm not going to cover many of the issues that I covered last year because, you know, it's repetition. Some of the things, of course, we have to always repeat because Allah Ta'ala says, remind the believers, reminding is beneficial for them. But, uh, you know, for the beneficial benefit purpose, I brought certain new issues that we need to dis discuss and some correction that we have to make uh, 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 from last year's, uh, you know, discussion, because always, you know, we have to uh, 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 learn the zakat and salat every year, so that we kind of check and verify what we have been doing is correct or not. Sometimes, as we always mention, our ulama mention, that we learn, we think it's correct, but more knowledge comes, more understanding comes, more evidence comes, more discussion comes, and it looks like our previous position was not exactly correct. So what do we have to do? We have to correct our previous position and move to something which we know as correct inshallah ta'ala. And for this to happen, we have to keep on reviewing the knowledge with our ulama, with our scholars and with the books and so on and so forth. And there is nothing wrong in this and there is no contradiction in the religion. Because some people they will say, last year you said something, this year you are saying something else, we are all confused. No, you don't need to be confused. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, our religion is a religion of truth. But as human beings, we have uh, limitations and our understanding has limitations, our knowledge has limitations. Our mashayikh, our st scholars who we learn from, they are fall into their category. They are higher than us, we are not even close to them for sure, but they also fall into that category. So they even correct their positions every year or every now and then. That's why we know that in some of the Masail, some of the rulings we have, some scholars have three, four opinions. Why three, four opinions? Because they have uh, reviewed there and they have corrected uh, uh, in some occasions. And, and each of the, the, their students, they collected those informations and they, 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 they narrated it. So when it reached us, it looks like one scholar gave five opinions or three opinions or four opinions about a matter. The matter is not like that. The matter is because they, they do muraja'ah and they do review and sometimes an alim is asked his question at a certain occasion and he will say no. And then he is asked the same question in another occasion, he will say yes. Not because he is contradicting but because his understanding changed. And that's something that we need to realize and, and, and keep that in mind and that's why the, Sheikh, our, uh, one of the great muhaddith of our time, Sheikh Al Alban used to say, Al ilmu la yati al jumud. Knowledge does not come to a person who is a, a static person, like, you know, an inanimate object. He doesn't want to move. I learned this and that's it. All the truth now revolves around what I learned. No, not necessarily. You need to know that you are a human being. You are processing this information. Your understanding could be wrong. You think this is here, it's right, and this could be wrong. So what do you do when you know it's wrong? You repent to Allah. So Allah, I didn't understand. Now I understand. I, I, uh, you know, uh, change my, or I correct my situation. The zakat, the ulama, they are agreed upon. That if these five conditions are there upon a person, then zakat becomes obligatory upon this person. First of all, Islam. He has to be a Muslim. If he is a kafir, there is no zakat on it. Second, the ulama, they discuss this issue of hur, meaning he has to be free. He cannot be a slave. Uh, at this point, uh, you know, we do not have that issue, so I'm not going to delve on it. And on top of that, I, I did not quite understand this condition based upon Kitab and Sunnah. Okay, so I need to study this point again. But the other, like, let's talk about the four things which are applicable for us. Islam, then Bulugh, meaning he has to reach the age of puberty. Before the age of puberty, this person doesn't have any obligation 
uh, uh, in the religion. So zakat cannot be obligated upon him in that sense. So if a person has, is Muslim and he has reached the age of puberty and he is aqil, meaning he is not majnoon, he is not crazy, he, his head is working. Huh? And the th fourth is very important, milk. He has to own the wealth. Milk is to own. And this, this fifth condition, including the hurriya, uh, that we are not talking because it doesn't really apply to us here, the milk is very important, meaning I have to own the wealth at the time I'm calculating the zakat. If the wealth, the, 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 the amount of money that I have uh, is, a, is a loan to somebody, for example, do I pay zakat on it or not? The ulama discuss it under the, under the title, zakat on loan. Some scholars, they say the loaner doesn't pay zakat because he doesn't have the money. So when the loaner gives out the money, some of the ulama, they saw that the loaner does not actually own the money. He ha owns the right of the money, but he doesn't own it. It is in the hand of the other person. Unless he gets it, he doesn't own it. Because if he owns it, he can spend it. How can he spend it? It is in the, in the, in the, in the, in the qabd of another person. Another person is owning it. So they say the loaner, this is the reason those ulama say the loaner does not pay zakat on it. Whereas other ulama, they said, no, even if he does not have the money with him, he owns the right of the loan, which means he owns the loan, which means he should give zakat on it. And this is why we, we see there's a difference of opinion from the ulama al-kiram. And these issues, when there is a difference of opinion, we have to understand that in many of these cases, there is no text, no nas from the kitab and the sunnah. No, 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 no text from the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. to exactly point out that this is the reason the loan uh, doesn't have zakat or loan has zakat. I'm not going to talk about the issue of the loan today. I spoke about it last year. I want to make a separate discussion about this in a separate video and I'm going to post it inshallah later on if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the ability. But this is the point, the milk. The ownership of the wealth has to be complete. If I have $10,000 in the ownership of somebody else I have the right to the money but I don't own it at the moment I am I am calculating my zakat then there is no zakat on that specific amount of money uh, next point there are different types of zakat there is zakat al-fitr which, which is due upon every Muslim uh, at the end of Ramadan before the Eid, the local Eid Salah, which is known as Zakat al-Fitr, and it has to be given in the form of money. I'm going to talk about this because Ramadan is coming very soon. And then now we have Zakat al-Mal, the well, the Zakat that is due upon our Mal, and Mal here talking about the Dinar, Dirham, Nukud, or Fulus, meaning the, uh, the currency plus the Dinar and Dirham. And the ulama, they, they, there's a big, of course, a big discussion with regards to is there zakat on huli? Is there zakat on ornaments, gold and silver ornaments? Uh, we are going to discuss this issue a little bit details this year because I received one of the uh, paper from our sheikh, uh, Sheikh Hassan Abdel Fattah al-Barqawi, and he has a new position on this. But anyway, I'm going to discuss the narrations he brought there from the Sahabat al-Karam with regards to Zakat al huli uh, uh, So uh, we will we will know that there is a disagreement among the ulama with regards to the gold jewelries, uh, whether it is zakatable or not. We're going to talk about that. But let's take it from uh, uh, from here that zakat al mal means the dinar, the dirham, and the nukud, the gold coins and the silver coins and the currency. For sure, there is no difference of opinion. With regards to this matter, then it's also zakat is zuru wa thimar, meaning zakat on the agricultural products. Uh, there are certain type of agricultural products the Prophet allocated zakat for it. We are not going to talk about this in our class because it is not usually applicable for many of us over here. Then there is called zakat al ghanam, al ibil wal bakar wal ghanam, uh, the zakat upon the animals. Okay, uh, if you have five camels for a year, then something is due if you have 40 
uh, uh, sheep for a, or a goat for a year, so certain, certain things is due. This is called a zakat on the animals. We are not also going to talk about that because it does not really apply to us in this circumstance. Our focus would be zakat il mal or the zakat in nukud or the zakat in nid, as they say, that the zakat which is due upon the uh, the money, the currency. So zakat is due upon only halal wealth. If somebody collected haram wealth or he has haram income, even that income is million dollar, there is no zakat due on it because the haram wealth cannot be purified with zakat. So what does the person have to do? He has to repent from his uh, uh, evil, uh, you know, wealth uh, like collection first, and then uh, see what of that amount of money that he collected it is allowed for him to keep and what is not allowed for him to keep and then he collect collects his howl from there or his uh, you know the the zakat of a year and he uh, 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 he gives a zakat when it is due upon him zakat is only due upon things which there is clear evidence so the general rule is there is no zakat on anything there is no zakat on anything regardless how precious that material is unless there is an evidence unless there is an evidence Mathalan, for example somebody has an antique a piece of antique which could be fetch about one million or two millions from the current market does this antique have zakat some people they will say yes it has zakat because it is very expensive and you should be giving to the poor people I mean you know if the person wants to give to the poor people that's something else but when we talk about zakat no because there is no tax for this. However, when he sells this antique, and let's say he makes one million dollar, and this one million dollar, let's say he gets it today, some people will say you have to immediately pay zakat on it. The answer is no, you don't. You wait on this one million until it finishes a whole year. After one year, from today is the 28th of Rajab, next 28th of Rajab, if you have this one million dollar left, or whatever is left from him, as long as it is above the nisab, you pay zakat on it. That is the correct way to collect the zakat. Uh, 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 you will see that a lot of people, they will come and they will print out a big la pamphlet and they will send you. Everything almost they will count. And they will obligate you to give zakat. There is no proof for this. Uh, zakat of the dinar and the zakat of the dirham in the time of the Prophet Wasallam, as we know, in the time of the Prophet Wasallam, it is something that we I have to understand in the time of the Prophet there was no paper money there was no dollar there was no takka there was no rupee none of these currencies that are now in the world that we deal with the currency was there in the time of the Prophet the only currency the Prophet time was the dinar and dirham dinar and dirham what is dinar is gold coin and what is dirham it is silver coin the Prophet established, and this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, established this rule of the purchasing power in his time, which is one dinar is equal to 20 dirham. But dinar is equal to 20 dirham. This was the, uh, the, the, the purchasing power of dinar at that time. And this is the asal of zakat today. There is no dinar anymore. The Prophet's dinar and the Prophet's dirham gone. Meaning like, it is no longer a currency in our market. Today you can get those dinar, original dinars and original dirham, possible, possible. I mean, there are of course fake mints, but there are the real mints of the Abbasids, of the Umayyads, and even in the time of the Sahaba al radiallahu anhu. There are authentic dinar and dirhams. People can own them, buy them, and own them. Those dinar and dirham, Today, in the market, if I go and want to buy something, they are not going to take it. For example, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu they used to go and buy a land with dinar and dirham. I have now, let's say, that hundred thousand dinar I collected. I want to go and buy a property, and I tell them, this is thousand de dinar. Would you take it? They will say, no, we don't recognize this. Convert this into dollar. So, here comes the concept that in our time then, how do we calculate the zakat? The ulama al-kiram, rahimahullah ta'ala, what they did is they took the dinar and they took the dirham and they measured it. 
and they converted that into gram. So one, one, uh, uh, okay. So before that, let's talk about the nisab. What is the nisab of a zakat? The nisab of the zakat for gold is 20 dinar, 20 golden coin in the time of the Prophet. Those golden coins. And the, zakat, the, the nisab or the minimum amount of silver is 200 dirham. Why? Because 1 dinar is equal to 10 dirham. That's why. So as you can see, 20 dinar is equal to 200 dirham. So that's why we have the hadith. And I don't want to go to the hadith because we have spoken about it in our last year's class. You can go and listen to this. There is many hadith, hadith of Anas ibn Malik, hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Aisha and others. Authentic narrations, inshallah. The khulasa, the gist is, if somebody has 19 dinar, less than 20, anything less than 20, he doesn't have to give zakat. Anything more than that, the whole amount is zakatable. Not the extra, the whole amount is zakatable. So for example, if somebody had 40 dinar at the time he's calculating his zakat, how does he calculate the zakat? He calculates the zakat on 40 dinar, not on the extra, not above the nisab, the whole amount, the 40 dinar. Similarly, if he has 400 or 500 dirham, then he calculates 2.5% on the 400 or 500 dirham that he has. Now, in our time, we don't have dinar and dirham. We don't have that. So what the ulama they did, as I mentioned to you, just that they converted that dinar into gram. They measured it and they said 20 dinar is equal to 85 gram of gold. And 200 dirham is equal to around 600. So they specifically 595 gram. This is kind of the nisab in our time, the ulama. This is the reason they brought this. Because there is no dinar and no dirham. And unfortunately, there were people who came and they said, since we don't have dinar, since we do not have dirham, we don't have any zakat. So there are some people, they came and they said, no zakat anymore. And they said, the, 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 the paper money that we have, this was not in the time of the Prophet so there is no zakat on anything. So they, they basically abolished the zakat. Some people, they fell into these mistakes. Okay, but the Alhamdulillah, the ulama, they corrected this, of course, corrected those people. And the correct position is, inshallah ta'ala, that we have to understand this conversion. And this is one of the reasons we have a difference between the howl of gold and the howl of silver. In the time of the Prophet ﷺ, there is no difference. Because 20 dinar is equal to 200 dirham. But once we convert that into gram and we calculate the dollar amount, there is a big difference. There is a big difference. And this is why we have this discrepancy unfortunately and we are going to discuss that inshallah how to uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, 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 understand what we should do in this discrepancy inshallah so there is something called the howl the ulama that agreed upon that zakat is not due upon a person unless the howl is completed and this is because of the hadith of our mother Aisha and Sunnah Ibn Majah authenticated by Imam al-Albani and others that the Prophet said, La zakata fi malin hatta yahulu alayhi al haul. There is no zakat upon the wealth until it has completed a haul. What is the haul? The Islamic year, the lunar calendar, according to the Islamic lunar calendar. So, those people who say, I give my zakat in January, I zakat, give my zakat in February, wrong. Why it is wrong? It's because the lunar year is shorter than the solar year. So if you do it according to the date of the solar calendar or any other calendar, you might fall into this problem. So all the matters of the religion, when we are talking about this and also other things, uh, and the, Allah Ta'ala has given us certain months or certain year or certain something called Idda for the divorced women or those women who has lost their husband, Idda, the period of the, the, the mourning that they have to pass, all of this has to be based upon the lunar calendar which calendar because there are so many lunar calendars in the world today the islamic lunar calendar with which we see the moon the sighting of the moon and so on and so forth so that is the howl with regards to the nisab now we understood the nisab is what for the dinar it is 20 and for dirham it is 200 uh, but when we calculate that gram and dollar 
there is a big difference. So, for example, today is March 12th. Uh, I was checking, I think, in the morning, the gold price. As you know, the gold price is constantly you know, flickering, same as the silver price. price. Uh, I don't remember exactly what time I checked, but it was $55.679 cents. Uh, 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 per gram of gold. So if you multiply that by 85 gram, it comes to be $4,732.715. The battery is low. Uh, brothers, we might have to pause the lecture for two minutes because they're saying that the, the battery is low for the camera. So, inshallah, once uh, we'll come back, inshallah, immediately after we change the battery. But let's move on until the turn of the switch. Uh, so, that is with regards to the gold. As with, as with regards to the silver, one second. As with regards to the silver, when I check the price, uh, at that the same time I check the gold, per gram was... Uh, uh, 0 0.8433 0 